do, 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 do. Hey, here we go. <laughs> up guys candace b here thank you so much for coming to my channel welcome back to my subscribers and welcome to my new ones how are you guys doing i hope you are doing well so we are back with another analysis video so of course we are going to be looking at gbp jpy today and i will also take a quick look at gold as well i haven't looked at gold in a while um so I might be, you know, just completely confused with what's going on, probably, <laughs> but GJ is my main cup of tea right now. And of course, as I always say, as a disclaimer, this is just how I personally analyze my charts. I'm not telling you to do the same thing. This is not advice. I'm just literally talking out my thoughts and I'm not a mentor. People still ask, I don't know why but I'm not a mentor. I'm also not giving you a signal or whatever the case may be, so just take this analysis with a grain of salt. And I always encourage you guys to do your own research, your own analysis, etc. Just do you, do your own thing, you know? Follow your own processes, develop your own strategy, and just flourish. But that being said, let me not blabber on any further. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, so let us get into it. Okay, so we're starting on the monthly time frame as per usual. So we are approaching the end of the month in a few days. We have a few days left in September, and as you can see, GJ is pretty, pretty bearish. We see that lower high, lower low structure, and it has not been broken at all. It's following it pretty well so this huge bearish candlestick really shows you know how the bears have really been in power this month overall yeah it's just been pushing further and further down each week and of course we never know what the market is going to do price could reverse completely you know something can happen in the world and just completely uh, change structure but if we're just looking right now at the structure of price action it's pretty fair to say that there is a high chance that GJ will close bearish in some sort of way. And yeah, we'll see in a few days. So let's go to the weekly time frame and see if anything looks clearer. Just gonna zoom out here. All right, so as you can see with confluence with the monthly, the recent weekly candle also closed bearish and is following that lower high lower low structure overall if we do zoom in just to kind of look at recent price action there is technically kind of higher lows higher highs being formed recently and I don't see that there has been a breakdown here to kind of follow that overall lower high lower low structure I hope I'm not confusing anybody but for me how I was taught and how I kind of look at things I like to look at more recent price action so even though you know you, you, you zoom out and you see lower highs lower lows right now i see higher lows higher highs so i keep that in mind always but if i'm looking at this most recent weekly candle that closed last week we see that price opened it pushed up a little it pushed down pretty hard but then the bulls came into the market and drove price right back up even though it did close bearish that is a pretty big lower wick so that's something to keep in mind that you know this week coming bulls might be preparing to really take the market by storm i wouldn't be surprised if you know price gapped up at the start of the week but you know we, we never know when that happens depends on you know news and whatnot that happens over the weekend and it depends on orders that um, are being filled or that are waiting to be filled there is still that higher low higher high structure on more recent days or weeks um, i should say uh, so yeah curious to see what will happen let's go down to the daily okay so with the daily we see lower highs lower lows so this kind of looks a bit more clean to me if i'm looking even though these candlesticks look kind of weird these dojis but um it looks a bit a bit better to me overall so with me what i'll be looking for is to see if price is going to you know make a lower low this week i want to see if this was the lower high that was created um and go from there so really I'll definitely be just waiting, won't be trading on Monday because, you know, price has to set up, the market has to set up and show us its hand 
So what I'd be looking for is for the Monday candle to close bearish and to not, you know, close above this area here. I want to see it close, hopefully, in this vicinity, um, just to kind of confirm that we will be pushing down. And I'm also not going to be trading on Monday because it's my birthday. Hey. Yeah, that kind of works out because I don't want to look at the charts on Monday anyways. I want to wait and see what happens. So yeah, if I can, you know, see some sort of confluence, if price is going to, you know, be pushing down, definitely want to see some sort of bearish candle form and then, you know, start to work its way down. For me, if I'm looking for buys, I would have to see absolutely, you know, price close above. So I would want to see that Monday candle close above this area here. Um, if not, if it's closing below, then to me, that's still indication that we are heading down. And I would just simply be looking left to see where exactly price might be wanting to push to. You know, for price to break past this area, breaks down past this area then yes for sure we are going down and even let's say if price pushes down and someone misses that kind of push down um, let's say that you know the Monday candle is super bearish then what you can do is just wait for that retest and then get in there on its way further down so we will see what happens but it's making quite a bit more sense to me on the daily how it's looking right now We'll go down to the 4 hour, see what it looks like. Yeah, so the 4 hour starts to look very choppy to me. Quite confusing. I feel like it's starting to move sideways. Let me see. Yeah, I can easily draw a box around this price action. So to me, price is just bouncing. You can see it bounced to the bottom, came to the top, bounced to the bottom, came to the top, bounced to the bottom, came to the top. It's just bouncing, so I really want to see what happens. I don't want to be trading this at all. I don't want to be in any trades unless price is above here or below here. And that's just the best way for me to keep it simple. Um, just with my personality, my temperament, how I trade my discipline, I just want to wait. I don't want to force it or I don't want to force anything. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what 4 hours looking at. Pretty straightforward. It's just moving sideways right now. Let's see the 1 hour. Yep, same thing as the 4 hour, just with more candlesticks. Um, you see that bounce up, bounce down. Boom, boom, boom. You know, some risky traders might say, okay, well, last time price came up here, it didn't push all the way back down here, so the fact that it only kind of pulled back to this area maybe it's gonna push up and let me enter buys I'm, I'm gonna wait I'm just gonna wait because price can very well do something like what it did here on the 25th where it looks like it broke out and then it just came back in so that definitely was a fake out and anyone who didn't wait for confirmation that price was gonna you know push up from this area they got stopped out so it's just sometimes it's just unnecessary like you know of course you could have taken that trade that's you know valid um, if, especially if you have a tight stop loss you know you manage your risk but if you had a bit more patience then you would see that price push down and you would be happy that you didn't take the trade so yeah let's go to the 30 minute yeah nothing's like the lower time frames it's just gonna look the same it's just gonna look like it's moving sideways and it's just gonna look like there's more candlesticks. So as the time frames get lower, it just gets more confusing to be honest. Um, definitely would wanna be focusing on the higher time frames for that confirmation of where price really wants to go. And for those of you who kind of get antsy, you know, you think that price is gonna move without you, don't worry. There is always, always moves to be made in the markets with any instrument that you trade in this market, don't worry. Don't feel like you're missing out on anything because you're not, and I'm reminding that to myself as well. Just be patient and wait. It's, it's just all you have to do, all you can do really when price is moving like this. And also just keep in mind that 
it's NFP week, Friday, first Friday of every month since October starting. First Friday of every month is NFP, so just be careful because even though that's technically US news, you know, of course GJ gets affected, other pairs get affected by that news. So, you know, the market can be moving very, very weirdly just because it's setting up for Friday. So be mindful of that and don't rush. You might not see opportunities this week. So be prepared to not see the perfect opportunities and be prepared to just sit on your hands. And again, I'm reminding myself <laughs> of that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much GJ, real quick and easy. Let's take a look at gold. I'm kind of nervous, <laughs> but let's take a look. Alrighty, so we are on the beautiful chart of gold. Yeah, look at that rally, pretty. So I have not looked at gold in a while and keep in mind, I will not be trading gold this coming week. So just as a disclaimer, I'm just looking at it just for the sake of it, just to practice and share my thoughts. So yeah, don't listen to me <laughs> when it comes to gold. Um, but yeah, as you can see, price um, just in the last few months, you know, you have that huge bullish candle and then we have this doji and then we have this push down. So even though this looks like a reversal pattern where, you know, price is getting ready to push down, you never know with gold. You know, it's different from trading currencies. So you gotta keep that in mind. But as we see, definitely, definitely very bearish, just like GJ this past month. And yeah, it filled that wick. It filled that wick completely and even pushed past that wick. That's interesting. Filled that whole wick of the previous month. So yeah, that's interesting. Okay, let's go down to the weekly, let's see what's happening. All right. So it looks like price was previously in the past weeks kind of moving sideways and then it broke out of that consolidation. So it's, it's broken down out of that. I'm gonna keep that box there to see if it correlates when I go to the lower time frames. But yeah, you can see that price is just really moving sideways, not really knowing what it wanted to do. But mind you, even though these look like small candlesticks, there were huge moves in these. Absolutely, they're huge moves. This is gold, so gold, when it moves, it moves. So even though these look very small, I'm very, very certain that there were huge moves, quite a few of them actually within these kind of quote unquote smaller candlesticks. And then of course this past week was just straight bearish. Anyone who took sells on gold this past week, oh man, you were laughing to the bank. Kudos to you. Let's go to the daily. Okay, yeah, so my box is pretty much, you know, <laughs> it's corresponding to what I saw. We do see that break. I guess you can call this a retest, but I'll go down to the lower time frames to see, but I think this is probably like some sort of break, retest, and then push down. Um, yeah, it definitely looks very bearish. Everything's, you know, the monthly was bearish, the weekly's bearish, now the daily is bearish. Yeah, so all the higher time frames are bearish. So, I mean, if you're just going by that, then you can say that, you know, your bias is bearish. My bias would be bearish in this case. But for me, um, I would be definitely wanting to wait and see what price would do. Absolutely, I would want, just knowing how gold is, I would want to see it break down below this area, you know, and form a bearish candle here or if it breaks above. So just kind of waiting to see because it could very well, you know, open, start to rally up, break above here, tap this area again and then boom, push down or it can push up like you, you don't know. You just have to react when it comes to gold. You can't assume. Let's go to the H4. Yeah, it's moving sideways in this uh, in this area here. So definitely would be waiting for more confirmations. These wicks, the wicks, man, the wicks on gold are huge. Gold whipsaws like all the time. And you'll fit, you'll be confident. You'll have gotten into this nice trade, clean trade. And then it just whipsaws and just knocks you out. And you're like, what the heck, bro? What did I do to deserve this? What did I do to you? <laughs> but I know for a lot of people, gold is very addictive to trade. And so to each their own. I like gold, but I haven't been, I don't know. I haven't been gravitating towards it recently. I've been 
pretty I've been more conservative lately I guess um, so yeah that's why I'm sticking more with GJ because there's still that volume but it's just a bit less crazy one hour you know this area here I would say if you know waiting just to see price break down out of this area I personally would be waiting for that and then maybe like a retest and a push down or not even that far to be honest just to fill this range here just to fill this wick um, that's a pretty good range to fill and very possible um, in the early days this coming week for gold but because again like I said NFP is Friday um, and you know that does affect gold it could just be setting up for that so we'll see what happens and yeah if price um, let me remove some of these lines just to not confuse anybody and I'm just using these horizontal lines just for visual purposes um, but yes if price is able to break here then we can see that there is a range here this like area so we can see if price will fill this range yeah we'll see I don't know what gold's saying right now M30 yeah it's just wilding I'm just waiting well I'm not trading gold but I would just be waiting just for more structure to come into play and that's the thing when gold moves it really moves so just be patient and you know you'll get those trades and sometimes what will happen is, um, you know, you'll get into a trade and, of course, with gold, you know, I personally would recommend you putting your stop loss at break even as soon as possible, you know, as soon as it moves into profit. If it does, then, you know, break even and you might see that price hits your stop loss at break even more times than it hits your take profit. But at least you have managed your risk well and you've created a risk and you've created a risk-free trade, so it's just like you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. The goal is to protect your capital at all times. Protect your capital, so just keep that in mind, especially with gold. But yeah, good luck to everyone trading this week. Good luck to everyone trading um, any pairs or commodities or indices, you know. Take your time, be patient with yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by smashing that like button. I would really, really appreciate that as always. And go ahead and comment down below and let me know what pairs you're looking at, what setups you're looking at. Are you going to be, you know, executing? Are you going to be trading NFP? Let me know. Let me know if you trade NFP. If you are about that life, let me know. <laughs> I'm curious. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I post another video. And in the meantime, feel free to check out any of my videos on my channel and my other channel. But I hope you guys have a successful trading week and an overall successful day, week, and life. Bye!